In this video, I'm at Pleasant Point Museum and Railway to look at a railway lo locomotive with a big, big difference. It's a Ford Model T. Yes, this is a Ford Model T rail car. And yes, that is something else old, probably a Chevrolet um, behind it. Uh, it was built in 1925. There were two of them originally. Uh, they originally served in the Wellington area where they were a bit hopeless and then got shifted off to another railway where they were a bit hopeless because the tiny little four-cylinder engine by locomotive standards, uh, 2.7 litres I think, side valve and uh, two-speed gearbox because the um, you got the planetary gears and oddness of a Ford Model T. Um, but what's fascinating is this, this isn't quite the original because the bodies were scrapped but the chassis and engine are apparently the original items and this body was manu manufactured for it in the late 1990s and uh, if we have a look in inside the very quaint little doors we can see um, the fascinating controls because normally a Model T would have the throttle and the ignition timing on the steering wheel on the centre hub this obviously hasn't got a steering wheel it doesn't need a steering wheel because it runs on rails so it's just got the controls here uh, it's got uh, this lever down here is your typical handbrake and gear change uh, this lever apparently doesn't do anything at all and then we've got the three pedals which um, do not operate as you would expect on a model t um, got a few switches there window wiper roof light uh, private rainer russell and khan no idea um, I think that one does something with signalling, um, but you can see the millimetre, like 22,426 miles. And uh, yeah, it's just taking more of this beautiful body. Oh, we'll just cover controls first of all. Um, so to, to start the Model T, you move the lever to the middle, which releases the handbrake. And um, then you push down this pedal, which makes you start going forward. And when you fall down you're fully in first gear then you move this lever forward to the forward position and you release this pedal which starts putting you into second gear this is the brake um, for, for what it's worth uh, it does some attempt at slowing down and this one is reverse so you just push this in and you start going backwards so you definitely don't want to press that while you're going forward all very peculiar but yeah lovely details in here lovely glass looks absolutely beautiful and uh, yeah very simple but very effective seating uh, for not very many people and there's a little emergency access door at the back it's all very 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 charming Possible to operate the windscreen wiper? Yep, whichever one it is. Yep. Oh, you knew I wouldn't let you down. Thank you. So we're now at the Pleasant Point end of the station, and the gates have been opened, and the Model T can come in. And here she comes. A truly magnificent thing this is. Oh, with my backpack ruining the shot. There we go. Chicago Foundry, 1875, Dunedin. Do you want to stand 
take a picture of coming? Yeah, we'll do. I'll just come over here and look for even a plaque all about it. But yeah, this turntable is, it's in the town itself, uh, which is quite nice. So this is um, Pleasant Point, which seems quite um, pleasant. Uh, there's an XR6 version of my AU Falcon, uh, but we should pay attention because um, here comes a rather different Ford. Onto the turntable. With its little brushes. Keeps the stones away. No, I can yep. see you've not got the best visibility up there. But no, you can't really see where you I, I did my tail. Yeah, yeah, it looks about right. Normally, when you're on your own, you can do that. When you've got members of the public, you either overshoot or undershoot. Oh, yeah, south the law. Yeah. It's not a cheap car driver who doesn't do it. Don't, yeah. let, don't let him tell you. <laughs> so now we can unlock. I used to be embarrassed when I did it, but it doesn't bother me. Well, yeah. So I have to unlock the turntable because if you don't lock it, um, people come and play with it. Yeah, little steam engine. <laughs> there she goes. Not often I get to do a rotating shot. Look at that. Marvellous. Well, now you've got the fiddly bit of getting it perfectly lined up. As long as it lines up the other end, that's what's important. But yeah, you can see she's nice and warm already, overflowing a little steam. A little steam engine. How wonderfully quaint. Now we're going to take a bit of a time to have a look around the um, buildings here at the railway. Let's have a look inside one of the station buildings. Uh, so this one's presented um, as a museum. Um, there's some royal stuff going on here. Uh, there's Charles and Camilla, they were here recently. I don't think they came to this exact place, but they were in New Zealand. Well, wow. original ticket office. So this is the original building from um, 1874, and it was functional until 1968. Oh, look at the lovely old trucks. Yeah. Got to have a telephone exchange or you're not a proper museum. Must be a type. Oh, yes, there we go. Can't have a Kiwi museum without at least one typewriter. A lovely building. Gosh. So it's like many um, museums um, here in New Zealand. Uh, they don't have much, but they, they make very much of what they have. Um, this isn't a major tourist area, so it, it sort of stands out as um, somewhere a bit different um, here in Pleasant Point, but well worth coming to look at. That'd be the original branch railway line. Um, so they've only got two kilometers left of the original track they don't really want any more, they can't really manage any more. But yeah, very interesting. The canopy is actually from a, a different station, and uh, but dates from 1888. So it, it came from Tumeca, which I visited earlier. And um, these pillars made out of old rails, 1885. So the canopy might have been built a bit later, but that's when those rails were built. And uh, you can even check out the original station master's room. So it's had a refurb at some point in the 1900s, I think. But there's quite a lot that would have been the original features going on. 
So we're back at the other end of the line. There's Betty looking at one of her ancestors, a very unexpected ancestor. So um, time to turn the tables. So first of all, you have to unlock the turntable and then around she goes. And I'll have to watch out because there'll be a big stick coming in my direction any moment. Quite hard work. Imagine what it's like with one of the big locos on. Beautiful. I get lined up to go back in the shed. So here is the original body off one of the two rail cars that was built. Uh, it's in very poor condition. It was used. So someone lived in it for a time, um, but you can you can kind of get an impression of how faithful the recreation is. But you know, so much has been replaced already. Different patterns of glass uh, on different panels. But yeah, crikey, it is um, yeah very poor state. But at least it can be used to store. Look, some remnants of uh, Model T forwards there. Various bits, a cylinder head, pedal assembly. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can't really restore this because where would you start? You'd have to kind of replace everything. I mean, that's quite marvellous in itself. What year is it? 1960 how? 30G. This is typical of me, get more interested in the working vehicles, but yeah. So as we've seen in the workshops, uh, the steam locomotives run on wood here, so that's a lot of wood. Uh, the traction engine is just visiting for part of a steam rally. But yeah. <laughs> Blimey. So with the Model T at rest, we can have a nose around the um, workshop some more. Little Ruston and Hornsey. Yeah, actually sitting on the gearbox by the look of it. And uh, yeah, we can have a nose around at some of the carriages. This is an old radio van. Uh, still got the turntables and everything in it. It would broadcast wherever it went, but look of it. They do have fully operational steam trains here. This is the little D, but I've also got this monster, 699, uh, which is huge. This is just merely the tender. And uh, we can go and have an explore inside if I just steady myself. You see, they actually run on wood here. And gosh, yeah, look at this. So this will be steaming fairly soon. Uh, wonderful. Just look at the engineering here. Everything is so um, heavy. Very spacious after you've been in the cab of um, one of the uh, locos on the Vale of Rydal. Uh, where there was barely room to stand, but um, yeah, quite extraordinary. There we go. AB699. Six driven wheels, beautiful linkage. And uh, right at the end here is a, an engine I recognise from the Vale of Rydal. They've got one quite similar, although it's a posh model that has doors. And yeah, here we go, the Drury Carco Limited. Uh, this apparently now has an American engine of some sort. But yeah, I can give them permission to board. And we'll have a look right down here. Let's go through the guards van 
Uh, luggage racks apparently these were kennels for the dogs to be loaded in outside and uh, going to the posh um, carriages we've got these absolutely magnificent seats uh, it's a bit dim in here I'm sorry about that I can't really do much about the light levels we are indoors but the seats tumble so the look at that you can also see the base swivels as well and um, yeah very very um, comfortable but let's go and have a look at the cheap seats so we've got another oh we've got the laboratory apparently they have to keep that locked or people use it but beautiful sink so this is a restored carriage everything has been replaced passengers are warned of the danger and this way we find the cheap seats and these would have been the original um, carriages for, for the kids going to school back in the day lovely big lamps I wonder if they would have been gas back in the day and apparently there's even oh. uh, aging wheels be quiet thank you not sure why my phone decided to start playing aging wheels but he's driven the volkswagen xl1 that i've already driven um so i drove it in um, wales and he appears to be driving it in america uh, which is quite good fun uh, so well done aging wheels i will watch that video later on to see what he thinks of the volkswagen xl1 um old fuel pump here there are lots of um, bits of memorabilia and if we go in here got a most excellent model railway and um, I love the flashing light on the church very interactive so you can come around you can turn the playground on and the roundabout starts going and the seesaw here comes a little tram And the fun fair on. This is like the best day I've ever had, ever. A turntable, where's the turntable? Oh, there's the turntable. There it goes. Inspector Morse there in his Mark II Jaguar. Oh, we are. Oh, yeah, look, chickens are going. Uh, drying her clothes in the garden. Horse. Oh yeah, that's the horse putting up a bit of a fight. Love the fact there's a Leyland princess down there with a wedge. Um, it's like a PA Velox um, police car there. But oh dear, he's um, bumped his MGB quite badly there. Track working. Oh yeah. Remote control chopper. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Brilliant, a little Morris 1300 GT there. Some very poor mini parking. Tiny little BMW is set there. There's Thomas, um, busy at work. That'll upset anyone who likes proper railways, but I think it's a good idea to do. So yeah, a wonderful wonderful little display and I can kind of take you in from look at Princess Police car makes the lights flash oh I love this place it's it's amazing here's one of the old carriages that are restored some of those carriages are over a hundred years old and I've got a piano down here I have asked if I can do this so um, I hope they don't mind could do with a tune I think 
but yeah th there are bigger and better secrets here so um let's go and investigate yes they have a print room here apparently this one can still print these are some of the things it has printed and i managed to get the timaru herald from um, 1933 there's one there 1909 and uh yeah incredible and sadly the person who um looked after all these um printers is um unable to do so anymore this one's from 1893 but still a fascinating collection but there are more surprises to come there is all this old technology that they still manage to have here. I don't even know what half of this stuff is. Oh, telex machines. Wow. Emails for old people. But you'll, you'll notice quite a lot of film posters and uh, telephones in pieces variously. Um, an exchange. Fairley's last manual telephone exchange. I've been to Fairley. Another one of those relays that operates the flashing lights. Early computers. It's a quite remarkable place. It's far more than you expect. And uh, yeah, you, you'll notice the movie kiosk here. And uh, actual projectors, Sony Betamax, um, DVD players. Girls on the loose. Oh, that sounds like trouble. Goodbye Pork Pie, filmed at Horopito Motors. Uh, we saw the main mini star of that. And um, obviously it's pointless having a projector if you haven't got a cinema. Well, I'm not sure what all this will do for the light levels, but this is the railway's own cinema. And these marvellous seats, which apparently came from a movie theatre in Geraldine, which is where I've been stopping for the past two nights. Um, beautiful. So there you go, that was a surprisingly fascinating um, look around uh, the Pleasant Point Museum and Railway. Definitely somewhere I think a steam enthusiast should come for a happy day out. Um, quite extraordinary what they've got here and not just the locomotive based things but yeah absolutely thrilled i love my day here so yeah go, go and look at their um website i think they're on facebook as well and um yeah um, i'm sure they'd appreciate your support if you were able to get here so i shall say thank you very much for watching and i shall see you in a future video farewell As a bonus, I've just been given some goodies before I go. They're beautiful stickers. Well, I probably can't bring myself to use. They're so lovely. And I've got the brochure. But this um, travel pass, I've no idea when this was from. But uh, very much of its time, New Zealand Railways. Gosh. This is where your holiday starts. Wow, a massive map that's going to be too big to open up in the car I imagine that would have been a design fault surely well New Zealand at its best thrifty tours oh here we go the entire country of New Zealand so now I have a map well wow. So, um, yeah, I can show you where we are. We're, we're currently um, heading towards Timaru. Um, and I've already been to Akaroa and Christchurch. We're on our way to Omaru. Um, we're going to um, have a tiny little social there. I'm very briefly going to see Dunedin tomorrow. Apparently means tiny Edinburgh. And uh, then we're off to Invercargill for various fun-based actions before working our way up the west coast and uh, there's Franz Joseph Glacier there as well Queenstown is meant to be quite an interesting place albeit a bit touristy and then I've still got all of this to see I haven't been to Lake Taupo I haven't been to Rotorua um, I haven't been to um, Fakatain Fakatane sorry you've got to be a bit careful with that one Gisborne Napier meant to be quite interesting so yeah uh, Wanganui and uh, yeah so many places to go
and now I have a map so brilliant thank you very much what a lovely railway We go into top gear. Yep, yeah, that is it. Two gears on a Model T. A very strange sensation. <laughs> at least you don't have to keep a good grip at the steering wheel. No, true, that's very true. I'm just making sure the points are right, but this is an unexpected break. 